Hey, how's it going guys? Arman here with a new video and this is the unboxing video of the Sony HD-RT40. Now my dad has been into Netflix and Prime Video a lot lately so I thought why not step up his audio game a little bit. So this is the entry level sound bar by Sony which is a 5.1 channel sound audio bar. It does not support any Dolby Atmos or DTSX like object based surround audio formats. As a matter of fact it only supports Dolby Digital as written on the box. There it is. It does not even support DTS Digital Surround or Linear PCM at 5.1 if website is to be believed. Fortunately, most of the content online is available in Dolby 5.1 only, so we are in luck here. In this video, I'm gonna unbox this. I'm gonna set it up for the first time and I'm gonna give my first impression on how it sounds. I'll be explaining my setup later on in this video, but first, let's get to the unboxing of this video. Okay, so I'm sorry guys for the handheld shots and you can clearly see that it's stated on the box that this is an operation for the two persons. Unfortunately, my brother has declined to help me out this time, so I'm on my own today. The box is in the L shape as you can see, that is because the two tower speakers, the rear channels are placed here. I think the subwoofer will be placed there, inside, along with the sound bar. So this is the Sony HD RT40. 5.1 channel real sound, Bluetooth. This is how it is supposed to be placed. The power is 600 watts. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you this before. To my surprise, the HDMI cable is also included in the box. Now, normally with sound bars, entry level especially, these things are not included. Okay, there's a USB port to play for audio from the USB drive. There's NFC and Bluetooth as well. Okay, so there's a music center app that is compatible with this sound bar, which, which is available on Play Store and App Store. Okay, so Dolby Digital, as I said before, and HDMI cable. Okay, so on this side, it's written that it's the operation of two people. Two people are recommended. And the content in the box, which includes a sound bar, a subwoofer, two tower speakers, a remote control, and HDMI cable. It says that a 40 inch TV is recommended for the sound bar, but I'll be using it with my 32 inch TV. Okay, so let me grab my unboxing knife and unbox it real quick. Shout out to my unboxing knife. Okay. It's an impossible job to do it with the one hand. Okay, so this is the warranty card, I suppose. Let's start with this section. In this section, you're gonna get a remote control, two batteries, an HDMI cable, a user manual. We'll set it aside and let me request my brother one more time. Okay, so shout out to my brother who, who agreed to help me on this one again. Okay, so. Okay, so this is the base of the tower speakers, I think. Yeah, we'll set this aside. Okay, so. That is the subwoofer. So this is the sound bar and two tower speakers. Typical Sony packaging. Tower speakers are quite high actually. Okay, so guys, this is the tower speaker. So this is the cable. The same cable provides power and signal. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so this is the sound bar. I'm confused actually, but. It will connect to this end, this will be connected to this Okay, okay, okay. The sound bar will be connected to the subwoofer. The rear speakers will also be connected to the subwoofer. So basically, subwoofer is the main brain here, not the sound bar. I thought it's sound bar. So this is the second tower speaker. So, guys, I'm gonna set it up real quick. And I'm gonna hook up this to my TV and all, and I'll come back to you. So I have had this soundbar set up for like three weeks now. I have tested it, tried it, played different media on it. And I think I've reached to a point where I can suggest you guys whether you should buy it, consider it, do not buy it or shortlist it. 
Before I start with anything, let me explain you my setup real quick and guide you through the different components that you get, how to connect it and everything and how to do the placement and all. So my setup you guys must have seen is the Oppo UDP203, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 Pro, receiver of the Sony MDRHW700DS. Now all these devices are connected to the receiver through the HDMI port in the three HDMIs. And this one is giving output to the TV, to the HDMI 3 port. Now one HDMI cable is connected from HDMI 1, the audio return channel, to the subwoofer over here. Now to the different components that you get in the box and how to connect them. This is the first component that you get in the box, you must have seen in the unboxing video. This is the subwoofer. Now I thought the main soundbar here is the brains here, but no. All the signals and electricity is supplied to the subwoofer. The HDMI input, the audio return channel from the TV to the subwoofer goes to the HDMI port. Audio return channel that you can see written over there. There is an optical input, an analog port for the old devices. At the back of the subwoofer there are few usual prints like HDMI, Dolby Digital. Okay, so the speakers are connected through these ports here. So it has five different outputs for the five different speakers. The first three are for the soundbar, the center channel, the front right, the front left. These are the surround left and surround right. Along with these, there's a small fan built into the subwoofer. This is the model number of the subwoofer. This is the soundbar guys. It has a footprint of 35 to 36 inches. This is the center channel, the front left and the front right. All these speakers are getting input from the subwoofer over there and the wire connecting them is fixed at the back of the soundbar. These are the tower speakers that you get for both the left and right surround. Connection to them is given from the bottom like it comes down from there. There are some cable management clips and it goes back and connects to the subwoofer. This is the model number and the input that it gets. This is for the left surround channel and this is for the right surround channel. Just like the soundbar, the cable connected both the rear speakers is fixed. It's detachable from the subwoofer side but it is fixed at the speaker side and it is fairly large cable, fairly long cable actually. So long that I had to tie it up. This is the remote that comes in the box. It has a power button. Input to change the input from TV, Bluetooth, optical input or the analog input. The dimmer button triggers the LEDs on the subwoofer. You can keep it either on the bright, dark or just turn them off altogether. Menu button has some options built into it like leveling the speakers, increasing the level of the speakers. This is to go back and enter the menus. This is the volume button. This is for the subwoofer power. This is to increase and decrease the power of the subwoofer to mute. Sound field button is used to scroll through the different inbuilt modes like standard, clear, movie, music, sports, game. The voice button will increase the level of the voice and as the name says, the night button will engage the night mode on or night mode off. On the top of the subwoofer there are three touch sensitive buttons to increase and decrease the volume, to put it into pairing mode to change the input or to turn off the system. On a side note it takes around 7 to 8 seconds to boot up. In case you are wondering how much sound does the fan of the subwoofer makes, this is when the subwoofer is on and this is when the subwoofer is off. Honestly the sound is so less that I never realized there was a fan built into it. There is a system built into it where you can change the placement of the speaker from standard that is round to front. Now I thought engaging this setting will turn the surround speakers into front left and front right and the whole soundbar will be used as a center channel. Unfortunately this is not the case, it did not trigger those surround channels into front channels. HDMI CEC is built right into it so you can use your TV's remote to control the volume like increasing the volume, decreasing the volume. You can also turn it on and off with your TV's remote only. Since the subwoofer does not have an HDMI output, all the settings are done through this LED panel only. There's no option to see the settings on TV. Now that I have given you the walkthrough on how to set it up and how to run it, let's talk about the performance. I have connected this subwoofer, this soundbar to my TV and I am giving the signal from the TV to the subwoofer using audio return channel. That's how audio return channel works. Since this soundbar does not have an HDMI output, it blocks one HDMI port of the TV and like my TV only have like three HDMI inputs, I can only use now two of them because one of them is always blocked with the subwoofer. Speaking of inconveniences, you must have seen the starting clip that I made where I showed that it does not support DTS digital surround. That is one of the biggest bummer of this surround system. This is a big problem if you have a lot of Blu-ray discs lying around. Unfortunately, my Oppo UDP203 does not have the system of converting all the audio into Dolby Digital through HDMI. There is a workaround, it has an optical output, the subwoofer has an optical input. Oppo UDP203 has an option of converting all the audio into Dolby Digital when you are using optical output. To test the performance of this soundbar, I have seen stranger things on Netflix. There are few things that are to be noted. First of all, after my testing, I realized 
that the surround speakers are fairly underpowered when compared to the soundbar and subwoofer. You'll have to keep them really near to you or you have to increase that level which will bring on some distortion or you'll have to decrease the overall volume. On to the subwoofer now. Subwoofer is good. It's not rumbling the floor, it's not breaking everything but it gets the job done if you keep the volume at like 80%. I could just go on and keep complaining about this subwoofer but honestly for the price what I'm getting it's enough. Onto the soundbar. So it really depends what sort of media you are playing on it. You can either get a very good result or you can get somewhat disappointing results. I played a movie on Amazon Prime Video. The name of the movie is Dhoom 2. It is a Bollywood movie. The mixing of that movie is done very well. All the speakers, all the channels are engaged all the time and there is no distortion at all. And surprisingly Subwoofer feels very much powered in that movie. When I was watching Stranger Things, I realized one thing. There is a lot of distortion of the dialogues of the center channel if you keep the volume at full 100%. So I had to keep it at 80 to 85% to reduce the distortion. Distortion did not just stop there. Even at the 80% of the volume, if the dialogues are really loud, it will again distort. I mean, you can fiddle around the settings, you can lower the center channel, you can bring up the surround channels, but it will mess up the overall volume of the system. The only thing is that you have to change the volume according to the content. Stranger Things is a lot of dialogues, so I felt the distortion more. The movie that I watched, it's an action-packed movie. It has more of a sound elements, more of the background score and all. I did not find any distortion. In fact, it was so immersive, I would say. That's only because of these round speakers. They may be underpowered, but if you keep them just behind you, they get the job very well done. I used my Oppo UDP203 to play all the offline media that I had, and I used PlayStation 4 Pro to play media on Netflix and Amazon Prime. By default, PlayStation 4 Pro does not bitstream Dolby Digital from Netflix and Prime Video and you have to change few settings. You have to go to the sound and screen, you have to go to audio output and you have to change the audio format to bitstream Dolby. Now keeping it at bitstream Dolby Digital will bitstream all the audio from the PlayStation 4 Pro in Dolby Digital except for the audio that you will play from the Blu-ray drive of this PlayStation 4 Pro. Now let's go into Netflix and let me show you what I was saying. I'm gonna play a clip from Stranger Things season one where I heard a lot of distortion. Okay, here is the scene where Will's mother is shouting at Will's father. Now I'm gonna increase the volume to full 100% and hope that you hear the distortion. NYU, Lonnie. He's wanted to go to NYU since he was six years old. So then he goes to NYU. Get out. Get out. You need me here, Joyce. Oh, brother, I have not needed you for a long time. Oh, no. Look what happened. Okay. Oh, don't you dare! At least I was here! Oh, come on, Joyce. Just look around at this place. Oh, your Christmas lights? The hell am I supposed to think? You're such a great mom? You're a mess! Maybe I am a mess. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm out of my mind. But God help me, I will keep these lights up until the day I die if I think there's a chance that Will's still out there. Now, get... Now I'm gonna play the movie that I said about where I did not hear any distortion even at the full 100% volume. We are here at the scene. I'm gonna increase the volume to full 100% and then I'm gonna play. Yes, please. With all due respect, your majesty, we're in the middle of the desert. No one can see it from the outside. If I can see the skies in it, then it can be seen from the skies. <laughs> Okay, either this movie is mixed really well or Stranger Things is not mixed that well. So it really comes down to which media that you're playing on it. If it is encoded very well, you're gonna enjoy it a lot. There is a lot of rumbling of the bass. There is a lot of surround sound. They add a whole punch into the sound of the movie, especially the action-packed movies. They sound really great. 
I have also watched Dunkirk and Bahubali on Netflix. They did not exhibit that distortion that I was talking about. Bahubali also has some action packed scenes and they sounded really great. Dunkirk also has some gunshots and all that sounded really great. No distortion at all. So I think it really boils down to what content you're watching. If you're watching a well mixed movie, you're not gonna hear any distortion. The sound will be very good. You're gonna enjoy it a lot. Now that we have talked about the performance of the system, let's talk about the good things, the bad things, and what I think about it. First of all, the good things. It sounds really great for an entry level sound system. If you are just relying on your TV speakers and you have the money to spend on a good sound system, then I think this is a go. Setting it up is really easy. Just make sure your TV has an audio return channel HDMI output and it will start working. Now on to the bad thing. Number one, it does not have an HDMI output. So one of the HDMI port of the TV is blocked. Number two, since there is no HDMI output, fiddling with the settings is really, really tough. Number three, if the content is not that well mixed, there is a chance of distortion. You're not gonna like it. And number four, the biggest not so good thing about this is that it does not support DTS digital sound. So overall, the verdict. I think if you live in a country like India, you do not have companies like Vizio, where you're gonna get a Dolby Atmos soundbar in a very less price. And consider Considering all the options from the likes of LG and Samsung, I think you will not buy anything better than this at this price point. LG's and Samsung's, they do not have surround speakers, they only have the soundbar. Now if you are only going to use this for online media like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, then you do not have to worry about anything. Just make sure your TV has ARC support and it supports Dolby Digital. I think this is the best entry level sound system that you can get from a reputed company in India to watch Netflix and Prime Video on. I hope you guys like this video. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this video or any video that I have previously made, comment down below. You can also follow me on my social media. The links are given in the description below. The link to buy this product will be in the description below. Subscribe for more content like this and I hope to see you around. Peace.